you know the book by now. It just takes time for yours truly to read it and keep reading with you. So let's start on page 101. We're finally hitting the big numbers, right? How long do you think it'll take to get all this done, she asked. This is Saturday. If we work hard, we might have the scraping finished by the middle of the week. The rest of the week we can paint. He was glad to change the subject. Tomorrow, she asked, is Sunday. Ranchers take that day off for the day of rest. We didn't haul hay on that day. Okay, she drug out two syllables to make five or six. So I thought maybe I'd pick you up about ten in the morning. We go fishing out at the lake. I'll have Oma make us a picnic, he suggested. Is that a date? She smiled. Do you want it to be a date? If it's a date, do I get a kiss at the end of the date? She teased. Do you want a kiss at the end of the date? Why, yes, I do, she said. Why? That's page 101. Here's 102. To see if it will knock my socks off like the first one did, or if it was just a fluke, she said. And if it was, then I'll stop thinking about it. You don't have any trouble speaking your mind, do you? She shaded, sh shaded her eyes with the back of her hand. Not a bit. That bother you? He smiled down at her. It wouldn't do any good if it did. So at the end of our date, when we have a good uh, second kiss, are you going to be honest and tell me if it knocks your socks off or are you going to take fake it to keep from hurting my feelings? Honey, I don't fake a damn thing. His mind fell deep into the gutter. That was page 102. Okay page 106 and 107. Who is the witchy boss lady that has no patience? Larissa started on her salad. My mother, he said. She almost choked. I'm sorry. Don't be. Mother can be witchy when she doesn't get her way. And once she's decided she wants something, she's not pleasant until she gets it. Hank said. His jaws and eyes had relaxed and he was almost normal again. Larissa swallowed hard. Sounds like my mother thinking, but your mother is a backwoods trailer trash and mine is a multimillionaire entrepreneur with a grudge against my father. What's your mother's name? She asked. Victoria. And yours? Doreen. And she had red hair just like the little girl in the movies. Well, now that's a surprise. I pictured her with black hair and brown eyes, Hank said as he ate his salad. That's my father. He was Indian. Mother is pure Irish, red hair, green eyes. Thank Charlene only ta taller. Thank someone who doesn't look much older than Charlene, too. Oh, come on. If she's your mother, she has to be 50, he said. Yes, she is, and if you ever meet her and say that we, you have a red dot between your eyes within a week. Hank cocked his head to one side. What? Thank Sniper and a red laser dot. Thank Hitman and Big Bucks. So is your mother tall and dark-haired like you, she asked. Was your father a sniper in the war or something, and he's got this vendetta against anyone who thinks your mother looks 50? And my mother is a tall blonde with blue eyes. They say I look just like my father did at my age. Larissa finished off her salad and swiped the remaining salad dressing up with the last bit of garlic bread. Don't remember my father. He left before I was a year old. Mother would simply put out a hit on you and no one would ever know that Hank Wells died because he thought she was 50, not 30. They'd think he was in the wrong place at the wrong time and got hit by a shell, probably something to kill a deer. You do know they kill them with guns instead of cars sometimes, don't you? It was a truck, not a car, thank God, he said. Doreen Morley, he wrote that name on the back of his memory. As soon as he got home, he had to make a call to have her investigated. Information was vital in his line of business. Come morning, he'd know if Doreen Morley still lived in the same trailer, if she was a pole dancer in a nude bar, or if she was a Sunday school teacher in a religious commune. Yes, sir, Hank Wells was about to find out exactly where Larissa Morley came from and what she'd done in the past 30 years. Victoria Wells, Larissa said that name six times so she wouldn't forget it. One phone call tomorrow and she'd know everything about the woman. She'd know if the woman inherited her business or if she built it from the scratch and exactly what kind of business it was. Why was Henry, why was she and Henry weren't married anymore and what was it the day that she want, and what was that that she wanted so badly and was so witchy about these days? And her investigator would find out what it was that made Larissa weary of the best looking cowboy she'd ever seen. That was 106, 107, 108. Let's see here. Page 110, 111. 
Charlene had buckets filled at the same time Larissa set the pitcher on the tray with six empty pint jars. The woman handed Charlene a $50 bill and waited for change. So when did Larissa hire you to help? Last night, Larissa answered. Where's Julio tonight? He usually comes in about nine on Saturday nights. Should be here before long, Larissa answered. Then I'll make do till he gets here. She motioned the two of her friends to help carry the buckets and tray back to the table. Is she a hooker? Charlene whispered. No, honey, she's a chigger. What's that? Larissa laughed. Chigger is a woman who came to the honky-tonk for at least seven years, maybe more, every single weekend. The way I heard it is that she and Boom Boom was too mu damn much fun to charge money for it. Was Chigger her real name? Charlene asked. Larissa set out the ingredients to fill an order her two pictures for the pina coladas. No, it was something like Willie, Willa, but everyone called her Chigger. Why? She said she walks like a real chigger that she could put on an itch on a man to make it unbearable until she took him to bed. Larissa said, Hey, I forgot to ask how you'd like the apartment. It's great. Wish I had something that nice in Dallas. I made a grocery store run this morning after I cleaned up the beer joint, picked up some staples that it would last several weeks. Larissa filled a bucket with cores and added two scoops of ice. That sounds good. So is it going to take for a while for you to get this story written? However long it takes for you to find a husband. Then you best load up enough to last more than a few weeks, Larissa said with a laugh. Prickly sensation on her neck said that Hank was in the joint. It grew hotter and hotter the closer he got to the bar. By the time he was on the bar stool, she wanted to shovel a scoop of ice down the back of her tank top. Martina, he drawled and when she looked at him. Her mouth felt like she crossed the Sahara without a drop of water. Could I get two pitchers of margaritas and a pitcher of Coors? The woman who corner Julio the mo minute he arrived poked the head between Hank and the woman sitting next to him. That was 110, 111. Here comes 112, 113. I can make margaritas, Charlene said. The woman shoved her between Hank and the customer next to him, pressing every part of the scantily covered body as close as she could t to him. Woo, where'd you come from, darling? Norissa set the martini in front of Hank. I would have pictured you as a beer man, not a sissy martini man. Looks can be deceiving, he grinned. The woman leaned in closer to whisper seductively, I can think of places to put that drink that would be a hell of a lot more fun than a mason jar. Crystal glass, he asked in a fake innocence. We'll start with sitting that between my boobs and go on to other places, she flirted. Larissa fought the urge to reach to across the bar and snatch that long black hair out by the roots. Did Hank always draw women like this to him like flies on a fresh cow patty? Of course he did. With those muscles that draw and those damn sexy eyes, you are crazy to think you don't be the only one interested in him, is what she's telling herself. Here's your order, Charlene said. You find that rancher who likes to dance. I did, but I'd trade him in on this package. She gave Hank a long sideways rink, wink. <laughs> His wife would jerk those hair extensions off and choke you to death with them. Then she'd feed your eyeballs to the feral cats that come up from the woods at night. I wouldn't mess with him if I were you, Charlene said. The woman cut her eyes around at Hank. Shame on you. You should be wearing a wedding ring. Against my religion, he said. Religious do man doesn't belong in a beer joint. She huffed out toward the table where her waited her friends with hired hands from Garrett's ranch. Larissa giggled and then turned into full-fledged laughter. How'd you know those were extensions? When I left Iraq the second time, I decided I wanted an inside job working with women. Didn't care if I ever dealt with a man again, so I started a six-month course in cosmetology. Figured out first six weeks that working with that witchy woman wasn't a better way than working with an arrogant man. So I quit and found something else, Charlene said. I'm not men, never not married, and I never have been, Hank said. Charlene grinned. Thank you, Charlene Waverly, for saving me from having to drink a martini from Chigger's belly button. That set Larissa off on a fit of giggles. Charlene was good behind the bar. She had a sense of humor and worked her butt off. She wondered if she might change the woman's mind about that newspaper business and put her to work full time. What's that supposed to mean, Hank asked. Larissa wiped her eyes from a beer rag. I'll tell you about Chigger tomorrow. I don't have time tonight. Here they are. Here they come again, Charlene. I swear three dances and they're so thirsty they want to lap up warm beer through a pig trough. That was 112, 113. Here's 114. Four, and we'll ha we'd have to learn how to sink in an IV, Charlene said. Sarah Evans was singing Suds in a Bucket. Charlene did a couple of wiggles as she drew up a picture, Miller. I love this song. It's the story of my life. As soon as I finished high school, I left the suds in the bucket and didn't look back. 
Ever been back? Hank asked. Oh yeah, ten days into boot camp, I thought I'd made the biggest mistake of my life, but my name on the line said they owned me for four more years, so I sucked it up, went home. My mama damn sure learned a lot in those years. It happens, Hank said. Sounds like you walked a while in my boots. You been in the army, Charlene asked. No, no, not me, Hank said. Charlene poured to the jukebox. Oh, listen, don't you just love country songs? They tell the whole story. You don't know how many times we use the title of this song over there. Did I shave my legs for this? Was our theme song. Hank breathed a sigh of relief and then gone off on another tangent and stopped asking him questions. Larissa could have strangled her. She didn't care if the woman in Iraq had never shaved her legs. She wanted to know what he'd done if he hadn't gone to the military, and she had the distinct feeling that he was about to say more when Charlene butted in. Dern, dern, dern. You sure you don't dance with a customer, Hank asked. A slow two-step and two strips. A slow two-stepping song by George Strait put several dancers on the floor. Larissa remembered the days when she came to the honky tonk, had no idea how to do the country dances. She wanted to learn with, she wanted to dance with Hank so badly that her heart was hurting, and even yearning. Not when we're this busy. Maybe later, she said. Okay, that was a little bit of one fifteen, one fourteen. I marked one sixteen, so we're going to start there. One sixteen, one seventeen. The first notes of the piano started to make you feel my love by Garth Brooks. Go dance with him. You ain't going to get nothing any slower than that tonight. The crowd's been playing fast stuff, Charlene said. Besides, how are you going to know if he's the one or not if you don't give him a chance? Larissa looked across the bar. Hank had leaned against the wall and was staring right at her. She nodded and met. he met her in the middle of the dance floor. She wrapped her arms around his neck and he looped it his around her waist. They barely moved around the edge of the floor, but she understood what Charlene meant at two hearts. Only physical inches apart, beat it in perfect unison while they listened to Garth sing one of the greatest love songs of his career. Hank buried his face in her hair and sang along with Garth about the winds of change blowing wild and free, but that she hadn't seen nothing like him. He sang that he would go to the ends of the earth for her to make his, her feel his love. Aww. When the song started playing the second time, she looked up and he nodded towards Julio and saw the chigger woman in the middle of the dance floor. I saw him poke the same buttons four times. Folks get better, folks better get ready for, to slow dance for about 15 more minutes. She laid her cheek on his chest and shut his eyes. The lyrics and said the storms were raging on a rolling seas of a highway of regret, that he could make her happy, that he w could make her dreams come true. In her mind... That's what I want, someone to love me so much that he would play this song four times in a row and two-step with me all four times. The third time the song started, she took a step back towards Hank. He enjoyed keeping Larissa in his arms longer than it took to kiss her at the one time in the hay barn. Like Garth said, he could hold her for a million years to make her feel his love if only things were different. She opened her eyes to see Julio and his woman dancing right next to him. He winked and grinned. Larissa nodded slightly and looked up at Hank. He kissed her on the forehead when the song started the fourth time and kept dancing. If you're going to hang for a calf, you might as well hang for a full-grown Angus bull. He said, what? If you're going to break the rules for one dance, you might as well make it worthwhile. Would you go hungry and go crawling through the, down the avenue for me? She asked right after Garth sang those words. I would, he said. God, please don't let her ask me if I... Do her wrong like Garth says in the next part of the song. At the end of the song, he bent her backwards and brushed her a kiss across her lips. Thank you for the dance and for breaking the rule with me. I'm honored. That was 116, 117. Here's 118. You should be, she said breathlessly. He stood her back up and kept dancing to another Garth tune called The Dance. Ah. One more, Hank asked Larissa. Dance or kiss? Either or both, he said. She nodded. What about the song? Who played it? And it's going to, be, to last through four more times? I played it only once. Are you telling me something, Larissa asked. I'm shouting it from the rooftops, lady. All you have to do is listen. You are beautiful, and our lives are better left to chance. And whatever pain is in the future, I'm glad for this moment with you, Larissa Morley. And I wouldn't have missed this dance with you for anything the future has to offer. Sorry. Another good moment. You are a romantic, she whispered. He was a good dancer as he was kisser. If that silly feeling in her heart would just shut up and quit saying that other shoe was about to drop, she could have easily been the third princess in the fairy tale that Charlene wanted to write. 
Hank whispered the words in her ear as Garth sang them, telling her that if he'd known how things would fall, he might have changed it all, and that he was glad he didn't know how it all would end, because he could have missed the pain, but he would have had to miss the dance. When the music stopped, he stepped back and bowed slightly. One word searched its brand into her heart. That was Amen. That was page 118-119. 160 is a short one. I'll be up by and ready by then. Are you going to miss me when you go back to Dallas? She held her breath waiting for that answer. He looked across the table and his eyes went all soft and dreamy like they'd been there on Sunday when they were making boom boom. I'll always miss you, Larissa. This has been an incredible month. I've been crazy, but I, I'm glad that crazy deer introduced us. She smiled. He didn't ask her if she'd miss him. He already knew the answer. Once the cat was out of the bag, she'd never want to set eyes on him again. That was page 160. Are you catching on that Hank Wells is probably our mystery man that she's been wanting to meet, Hayes Radner? Sad to say. Any pay, anyway, page 178, 179. And that's it for tonight because the paper just fell to the floor. Imagine that. We'll read some more tomorrow night. So anyway, here we go. Hank grabbed Larissa around the waist and pulled her to him. They were both sweaty and smeared with paint, but he didn't care. He couldn't come clean, but he had to have one more kiss to remember what might have been. He tilted her chin up and kissed her hard, tasting her sweet lips. Woo! That is definitely hotter than the weather, she said when he broke away. You are some lady, Larissa morally, he whispered into her hair. Goodbye. He turned and walked away before she could say anything else. See you tonight at the honky-tonk, she called out. He didn't look back, but crawled into his truck and slowly drove away. What was that all about, Charlene asked. I thought the way he looked at you all day, that he was the cowboy who was going to ride up on that white stallion and take you away from the honky-tonk. I thought he was your honky-tonk dream. I have no idea. He's got a lot on his mind. Maybe he's wrestling with a decision, Larissa touched her lips. To see if he stays or goes, Charlene put her on her hot put her hot pink brush under the one running water. Who knows? They say that women are hard to understand. Quantum physics is nothing compared to understanding the male species. A blessed men, sister, Charlene said. That was page 178, 179. I'm just going to take a peek ahead and see if we can't read a few more pages. We're going to go ahead and read a few more pages. Page 185. The three people who walked in at last minute made their way to the front. The woman and the man stood behind the table, and Hank propped a hip at the front of the table. Larissa looked up at him. What are you doing? He looked straight ahead. If he looked into her brown eyes, he wouldn't be able to utter a single word. Hello, everyone. Some of you know me because you are regulars at the Honky Tonk. Some of you I've never met. I'd like to introduce myself, my mother, and our assistant. The man behind me is Wayne Johnston. He's the one who's been making most of the calls in an effort to buy your land. My mother, Victoria Radner, has had her heart set on owning this place for several years and had investor, investors ready to put their money into an amusement park. I am Henry Hayes Radner Wells, he said. Larissa shot up like a bottle rocket. You are who? Hank's face fell hard and steeled. You heard me, and I'm here to say that my mother and Wayne will still buy whatever land any of you are willing to sell at 10% over today's stock market price for the land, with hopes that if you do, that domino effect will others will sell if you do. That was page 185. Here's 186. But we thought you were going to pay millions, an older lady said from the back of the room. Victoria stood up and spoke. We have made an offer. We would have paid ten times what it was worth to buy, have the honky-tonk, but the rest of this land will be bought at ten percent over market. That's quite an offer in today's repressed market. I will be more than glad to have Wayne draw up the intent to pay, sell papers today. Are you sure you won't sell me this godforsaken place, Ms. Morley? 
Larissa shot icy da daggers at the woman. Larissa had seen her type before. Every time Doreen came home to, to Perry from one of her trips, it will be a cold day in hell, madame, when I sell this beer joint to anyone. Why are you so dead set on having it anyway? It can be easily be outside your amusement park personal reasons. I will burn it to the ground and concrete the whole area for a parking lot for my own amusement park, Victoria said coldly. Well, for personal reasons, I would burn it before I sold it to you, Larissa said. Must be the place makes witches out of everyone who owns it, Victoria said. That's enough, mother, Hank said. Larissa turned on him. This is between me and your mother. You keep your two cents in your pocket. Now, she, as she spun round to face Victoria, you don't know me and you didn't know who Daisy or Kathy was. I don't know about Ruby Lee, but I can vouch for the rest of the loudmouth and brassy. We are not witches. You are in my place of business, so you do well to watch your tongue. If you have your business discussed with your mother, feel free to come forward. I'm leaving now. Hank was exasperated. It all made sense now. Owning the honky-tonk would be a slap in Henry's face. Shock and anger hit Larissa in slow motion. You jerk, she whispered to Hank. Don't call my son that, Victoria fired up for a second round. She didn't care that he was there was an audience or that she had lost her frosty business shell. She was in the wretched honky-tonk, the place that Ruby Lee owned. Larissa glared at her. I guess it's not appropriate since you and his father were married, so I take it back, Hank. You are a son of a witch, and that's irrefutable. I'm not interested in 10% above market. I'll keep my land, Dolores Wilson said. Come on, Mavis, let's go home. I'm sorry, Hank said softly. He longed to reach out and touch Larissa to hold her and apologize with more than two words. She hadn't asked for any of this. He should have listened to her, his heart, and now it was too late. Sorry? Larissa raised her voice. You have deceived me, and all you have to say is sorry? I'm going home, Mother. You and Wayne can take care of this, he said. A word outside, Larissa, please. Oh, you'll get a word, all right. She marched resolutely to the door without looking back to see if he was following. That was 186, 187. Here comes 188, 189, 190, and 191. Victoria turned to Wayne. That was a big waste of my time. What in the hell is going on in here? And why is my son going outside with that woman? That's Larissa Morley, and I guess they've gotten acquainted over the last month, he said. Well, he can damn sure get unacquainted when it matters the most. He is too much like his father. She looked around the honky-tonk. What is it about this shabby place that draws men? It has nothing but a shack with a neon sign. Let's go home and start looking for another place for our investors to put their money. I reckon that would be a good idea, ma'am, Luther said. Victoria shot looks at the big man that would have frozen anyone. Who are you? Luther didn't flinch an icy glare. I'm the bouncer in this place, and I reckon you and your son have stirred up enough trouble in this town for a lifetime. You got your answer once and for all. Don't be coming around no more. What happened to Tinker? Victoria asked. Retired. He wouldn't like you any better than I do. That would make us even. I didn't like him either. Victoria huffed as she picked up the briefcase and headed for the door with Wayne Johnston behind her like a pet on a pig leash. What'd Tinker ever do to you? Luther asked. That is none of your business. She threw her over. She threw it her over her shoulder. That was page 188. Here comes 189. Larissa stomped all the way to the garage behind the beer joint, so he wanted a word. Well, she'd give him enough words to burn the hair out of his ears for the next 20 years. If he wanted one word, he, she'd have to hyphenate it because all she could think of was a single word was drop hyphen dead. Stop, talk to me, Larissa, he raised his voice. You don't get to tell me what to do, she yelled and kept going until they were behind the garage. Then she turned around, popped her hands on her hips, and shot poisonous darts from her brown eyes. How could she have been so deceived? Hank was Hayes. She should have seen it from the beginning. Henry should have told her. She should have asked him for more details when she was out there hauling hay. A million thoughts tumbled through her mind, and all she could get a hold on was the one that said she'd been such a fool to fall for him. Larissa, I wanted to tell you who I really was, I, who I really am, but it all got out of hand, and he paused and looked at her so bewildered that she might have felt sorry for him if she hadn't been so mad. And what, Hank? Or is it Hayes now that you are wearing a custom-tailored suit and dress shoes instead of jeans and a boots? 
was any of it real or was it all just a game to see if you could find out something about me and that you could use to make me sell the honky tonk and why in the hell is it so important that you have it her tone was pure ice without a drop of warmth in it that was page 189 here's 190 and 191 I couldn't tell you because it was real. You're right. I wanted to get to know you so I could find out if you had a weakness. Neither Daisy nor Kathy did, but there was not that possibility. And Mother was been trying to buy the honky-tonk for years, every scheme she could come up with, and every owner was a new challenge. It's her one obsession. It was my job, and I didn't intend to fall for you, but I did, and I couldn't tell you, he said. She looked up at the black clouds rolling in from the southwest, an almond for sure that she'd made a bad decision, and the storms they were about would bring a, a, would be a disastrous. Go away, I'm too mad to talk. Can I call you and we can discuss this more later when you aren't mad, he whispered. No, she said bluntly. I'll give you a couple days to think and try anyway, he said. Just leave. Don't call and don't ever show your face in my beer joint again. Goodbye, Hank or Hayes or whoever the hell you are. I don't even know you. She turned to watch the storm. She couldn't watch him leave. She couldn't let him stay. It was all, all of it hurt too damn bad to bear. You knew Hank better than anyone ever has, he said, walking away from her without holding her in his arms, burying his face in her hair, and tasting his tasting her sweet lips was the hardest thing he ever done. When she was sure he was gone, she slid down the back of the garage and hid her face in her hands. Cars and trucks left the parking lot, but she didn't hear them. Everything was obliterated by that one sentence that played over and over again. I'm Henry Hayes Radner Wells. The gaping hole in her chest where her heart had been that morning was a yawning abyss filled to the brim with pain. She never felt so alone in her life. Charlene sat down beside her and threw an arm around her shoulders. She didn't say a single word, which Larissa appreciated more than all the speeches in the universe. Larissa wanted to cry. She wanted to cuss, rant, and rave like a lunatic. Throw things, kick holes in the garage, yank up mesquite trees by the roots, and throw them all the way to Dallas at the almighty Radnor Corporation. But none of it would come out. It stayed inside and ate at her soul like a fiery acid. That was 190-191. Okay, it looks like... We're going to read to 196. Hank got into the, his black BMW, laid his hand on the steering wheel. He made the biggest mistake of his life. He should have told her before the meeting and left the whole thing to his mother and Wayne. He handled it most in the most juvenile, stupid way possible, and he felt like the fool that he was. He looked up when he felt a presence in the open window, hoping to see Larissa, even if she was still angry. He turned his head to find Luther's big round face not ten, ten inches away from him. 192, 193. That was one dim-witted stunt, Luther said. Hank nodded. Yes, it was. Riss has been my friend since the first time I set foot in this place. I thought you were a stand-up man. I'm sorry. I was wrong. You get, this w you get this one on the house. You show up here again, I'll wipe the parking lot with you. And you're sorry, Hyde. Understood, Luther said, uh, said seriously. I didn't mean to hurt her, Luther. I didn't plan on hitting that deer with my truck, and I damn sure didn't plan on falling for her, he admitted. Sometime it, sometimes it's too late to do what you should have done from the beginning. Guess you learned a tough lesson. Still don't give you any right to come sniffing around, though. So go on back to Dallas and let her heal. You done her dirty. I shouldn't give you another chance, but I believe you. When Luther moved, Merle was right behind him. I knew it. You were a drugstore cowboy. She deserves, deserves the real McCoy. What are you going to do about this, Hank, or whoever the hell you are? There's not much I can do. I goofed. I'll take my pride, my mistake, and I'll leave her alone. Take care of her, he said hoarsely and hit the button to roll up the window. Merle shook her head from side to side and scanned the parking lot for Larissa. As Hank pulled out of the parking lot, she headed toward the garage. She found Larissa with her head in her hands and Charlene sitting beside her. Charlene touched her fingers to her lips and Merle sat down on the other side and took Larissa's hands in hers and waited through darts the thoughts darts through Larissa's mind like feisty children on a school playground at recess with no intention of slowing down or staying put long enough for her to get a handle on them one second she was angry the next she was sad but when it boiled down to the kernel of matter she was bewildered what right do you have to be mad at him other than the, he made a complete fool out of you 
You weren't upfront and honest with him either, but my dishonesty wouldn't have hurt him like he did me. So he's Hank Wells in Palo Pinto County, and he's Hayes Radner in Dallas. Two people. That's what I am. I'm like Larissa Morley, and she's happy here in Mingus. So happy that I almost forgot about that other one. Crying was a sign of weakness, and she would not be weak. She found her niche in life was a peaceful community at the Honky Tonk. She would not let one crazy day or one cowboy destroy all that she discovered. She was Larissa Morley all the time now. He was Hayes Radner for the next 11 months. Those two people didn't know each other and wouldn't like each other if they did. It was over. She raised her head, swallowed twice, and said, Let's go drink a beer and get ready to open up the honky-tonk tonight. We're going to have a record number tonight. The Saints will be joining the sinners just to talk about Hank Wells turning out to be Hayes Radner. That was 192, 193. Here comes 194 and 195 and 196. That's my girl, Merle said. The honky-tonk's parking lot was empty and the beer joint was quiet as a tomb. When the three women trooped inside, Merle and Larissa sat on the bar stools. Charlene popped the tops off of three beers. She tipped hers up and gulped down a third of it before she came up for air with a healthy burp. Words exploded from Charlene's mouth like a bull let loose from a chute at a rodeo. God almighty, that shocked the crap right out of me. Who thought the Hank was Hayes? Guess Hank was named for his dad and Henry got the tagged with a nickname, I thought for sure he would be a, the cowboy that would carry you off on a big white horse. All goes to show what I know. I do better writing fiction. Maybe I will start that book, Larissa. This is horrible. Can I do anything to make it better? Larissa shook her head. Well, I told you he wasn't a real cowboy. I was about to amend my decision there toward the end but and think my first impression, impression wasn't right, but I d won't doubt myself no more, Merle said. Thank you both for your support. Larissa tilted the bottle up, but had trouble swallowing even the small, smallest sip of beer. Her cell phone rang and flipped it open. Hello? Larissa, I can't think of anything but how sorry I am, Hank said. Wait a minute, she said. Hank, Charlene mouthed. Larissa nodded and motioned toward the cash register. Hand me a dollar bill. Hank yelled into the phone. Larissa, are you there? I said for you to wait a minute, she said coldly. She fed the money into the jukebox and hit the buttons. Jody Messina's voice came through singing, My Give a Damn's Busted. Listen to every word and then hang up. I don't want to hear anything you've got to say. Don't call. Don't come around. I don't ever want to see or hear from you again. She laid the phone down on top of the jukebox and went back to her beer. When the song ended, she waited a few seconds before she going back to the jukebox and picking up the phone again. I guess he got the message. He's gone. That song is perfect, Charlene said. There's a country song for every mood or problem in this world, Merle said, like George Strait and Alan Jackson sing about in that one about murder being down committed on Music Row. George says that nobody wants to listen to them old drinking and cheating songs. Well, if they would hear the life that being sung, I got to go home to girls. Y'all need me, you call. I'll be back here in a little bit. You want me to put out a contract on him, Merle finished off her beer. No, he ain't worth it. Larissa lied with tears flowing down her cheeks. Go ahead and cry. Get it out and over with, Merle said. He's not worth it, Larissa repeated, even though she didn't believe a word of it. Hank Wells was worth it, but Hayes Radner had taken over her cowboy. She'd fallen for Hank Wells, who was trustworthy and decent. He was kind and sweet. Hayes Radner was a different man. What she knew about him, she didn't like. That's 194, 195, 196. So, we have some big moments coming up. Will these two get back together and forgive each other for their wrongdoing? Because, guess what? He doesn't know Larissa that well. There's two sides to Larissa. To find out more about the two sides and if these two will get together, well, you got to stay tuned. More of this book will be coming your way, hopefully, tomorrow night. Stay tuned.